Kind of an interesting problem I just ran into. I'll show you how I fixed it. Well, it has to do with my diesel caravan, so this is kind of an update on it. It's August 17th, 2010, and it's been four months, well, more than four months since I put that diesel motor conversion in it. And I finally had my very first problem. The only other thing I'd done was three oil changes. Well, this problem was it had a bad alternator. So I just got, got done swapping it out and ran into a unique problem. Although the new alternator works great. There's that little VW diesel stuffed in there. There's my new shiny rebuilt alternator that I didn't pay nothing for because I got it from a parts car and it was only a couple weeks old. And I put it in the vehicle, started her up, tested my voltage, and voltage was perfect. So I hopped in my vehicle and drove home from the farm and noticed a light bit of rain on the windshield the other day. My wipers didn't work. Uh, what the hell did that have to do with that? Well, if you remember a video I made a while back about how alternators work, well, they all work basically the same way, and they all have an extra lead on them, which is just a small positive lead, and it's called the exciter wire. When you turn your key on and power up your vehicle, voltage goes to this small wire on your alternator, not the output wire, which is the big one, and it excites the magnet or electromagnet for just a second, so it starts producing electricity. So in my alternator, that's the one, and this is the big one that goes to the battery to charge it. So it follows around, and right now it's unconnected, I'll show you why. Well, since this vehicle is sort of redneck wired, I had it wired to this blue wire, which is the constant positive that goes to the windshield wiper motor that parks it whenever you turn your wipers off. So that would give me switch positive, so that every time I turn the key on, my alternator would be excited. And that worked fine. That, that was here on this alternator. But now for some reason, it blew my wiper fuse. Every time I put one in, but not when the car was turned off. The wipers worked great. Start the car, the wiper fuse would blow. But every time I start the car after changing that fuse, the alternator still worked perfect. Great voltage reading, 13.79. So every time I started the vehicle, it sent a quick pulse of 12 volts to the alternator which excited it and then it just kept working but then the circuit would blow and the wipers wouldn't work because the fuse would be blown but you don't need any more power once it's excited so it would just keep working as long as you drove the vehicle then next time you go to start it you have, of course no wipers and it's discharging so then I took that exciter wire and touched it to the positive with the vehicle turned off and like it's doing now it just makes a tiny spark which is normal but when I started the vehicle and I touch it here makes a huge spark and the wire gets very hot very quick you have to let go of it so I measured the voltage it's like there was power coming out of here and it measured 6.38 volts and this was trying to put 12 volts into it and the two voltages were interfering and that was cooking something so I knew it if I would have left it connected directly probably would have fried something I changed the fuse for the wipers and then they just kept working so long as the exciter wire wasn't connected there well, as you may know, I can fix anything mecha mechanical, electronical, diesel, refrigeration, it doesn't matter. And I used to be also a TV technician. So I've still got TVs and TV parts laying around because I'm a hoarder. So I thought maybe if I pull a power supply diode out and hook that to my circuit, it wouldn't cause the two voltages to interfere because a diode only allows electricity to flow one way. But that didn't work. The one way when you biased it, it didn't allow enough voltage through to excite the alternator when you flipped it over because they work like one-way valves. It worked just like a piece of wire and allowed all the power to go through and it immediately got so hot it burned it out. Screw that. So then I took out a 1000 ohm resistor and put that in the circuit to the positive. Well that didn't allow enough voltage through so it didn't fire up the alternator. So then I took out another resistor from the power supply area which is 10 ohms, tried that, well, that seemed to make everything work, but the resistor sure got hot after running for a while, so I knew that wouldn't last long. Well, there's another kind of resistor that was right in that circuit right there. It's called a thermistor. That means when it gets hot, it loses its conduct conductivity and has more resistance. When it's cold, it has almost no resistance. What they're used for on CRT TVs, that means one with a big picture tube, is there's a degaussing coil that wraps all around behind the glass or an induction coil and a full 120 volts goes around there every time you turn the TV back on again from sitting for a while and you hear the TV go ding 
and that demagnetizes random magnetism that forms in the steel grid that aligns all the colors. So I've got my two test lead probes on it right now and it's showing 10.3 ohms. So now my exciter wire is hooked to that varistor and I touch it here you can hear that it's sending a little bit of power to the alternator. So now the vehicle's running and the voltage is 12.78. Not bad, but not right. There's the exciter wire. We'll touch the varistor to here, to the positive. You can hear a slight change in RPM. Of course, the voltage is rising now. Now if I leave it connected there, it doesn't even make any difference. But of course, I'm going to want to leave this in circuit when I'm using my vehicle. So now it's in circuit on that park wire, which is on the wiper motor, and now it's warming up. And I'll let you see the resistance in a moment. It changes. So I'll turn the vehicle off and we'll check. Now if I touch it, it's pretty hot, but I bet you the resistance is quite different. We'll test. Well, the resistance did start off at like 48, but now as it's cooling, the resistance is becoming lower again. So that works out perfect for me. I don't have to put another alternator in and actually have to spend some money because I got this one for free and it is rebuilt. So every time I start the vehicle, I get the full 12 volt pulse or almost that to the alternator and it fires it right up. And then it immediately starts to heat up and the, volt the resistance actually, when I tested it earlier, it gets up to 90 ohms resistance. So now it's no longer shorting anything out, which won't damage the alternator, won't blow any fuses, and I can leave it connected to my park system for the wipers and everything's back to normal. Sweet. So now I'll just leave it connected forever and problem solved. And if you wonder why that wire is gray and that wire is blue, well there is a little splice in between. It was so cheap I didn't want to buy a new piece of wire so I just used a used piece off a washing machine but it wasn't long enough so I used another used piece. So we're all set now. A couple pieces of washing machine wire, part of a TV, a defective alternator that has good output and we're back in business. Off to the beer store. Talk to you later.